Hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to talk about some recent results on our uh, GPU accelerated quantum circuit simulations with UC Lab plus um, plus, and that's joint work with Dan Camps uh, from NERSC here. So um, let's start with what is QC Lab plus plus? QC Lab plus plus is uh, object oriented and fully templated C plus plus packages package that we have developed for creating and representing quantum circuits. And um, please check it out. Uh, it's free available on uh, GitHub. And we have developed that with the numerical linear algebra focus in mind. And these are the following three key features of QC Lab++. First is efficiency and performance. Second, it's numerical stability. For example, um, for a rotation gate, we don't store the angle of the gate, but we store the cosine and the sine of the angle, such that we can do some numerical stable operations with it. And we try to make it as user-friendly as possible. So, and this with a goal to allow for rapid prototyping and testing of quantum algorithms in C++. We also have a MATLAB component if you are interested in that. And QC Lab++ is the backbone of several other packages developed here at Berkeley Lab. For example, F3C, it's the fast three fermion compiler for time evolution quantum circuits of Hamiltonians, spin Hamiltonians that can be mapped to free fermions. The Fable package, which is for fast approximate block encodings for synthesizing quantum circuits of approximate block encodings of matrices. And then QPixel, um, which stands for the quantum image pixel library, which can be used for uh, compiling compressed quantum circuits for, for example, the flexible representation of quantum images. So today I'm going to talk about uh, state factor simulation and uh, how we do that efficiently in QCLA++. So how do we apply a quantum gate to a given n qubit state, which is a in effect, a space of two to the n. So mathematically speaking, this corresponds to the following Kronecker product, where we have the quantum gate U, which is a unitary matrix. And then on the left and the right, we have some Kronecker products with the identity matrices. Today, um, I'm gonna explain how we can do that very efficiently by uh, calculating indices through bit operations. And for that, we will use the big ending binary convention. So suppose we have uh, just an integer j, then we can represent it, the, its binary representation as follows. And note that these monospace um, characters will correspond to bits, which are either zero or one. So here is an overview of the different type of quantum gates we are considering. First of all, the one qubit gates, the two qubit gates, but also k qubit gates, so it's a unitary acting on k qubits. Then we have the controlled gates, for example, a controlled uh, one gate, uh, example is a C naught gate. And then um, these uh, gates which are acting on different parts of the qubits, you could see, for example, the swap gate, not on nearest neighbor qubits as an example of these qubits, um, these quantum gates. So let's start with the most simple case, so the one qubit gates. With every one qubit gate U here, which is acting on the qubit Q, um, there is a unitary two by two matrix connected to it. And the state factor simulation breaks down, in fact, into a series of two by two matrix operations. I know uh, all these indices, they look very complicated. So let's immediately look to an example. So here we consider three examples. We have a three qubit, state, uh, three qubit uh, uh, circuit where we apply the, the one qubit gate U on the first, second, or third qubit. If we're gonna look to the matrix representations of these three different examples, then we see that if we apply the uh, one qubit gate U to the last qubit, we just have local um, two by two operations. On the other hand, if we apply the, qubit, uh, the one qubit gate to the first qubit, then we still have local two by two operations, which are indicated by the different uh, color schemes. 
but the elements are now separated um, two to the n minus one apart. So what we want to do is, can we compute this indices alpha j and b, uh, a j and b j efficiently? And yes, we can do that. We will be able to do that through bit operations. So more specifically, if we go back to what we have here, these two by two operations, and we look at um, these indices here, we can define this aj and bj as follows, where we have at the cubed qubit either a zero or a one, respectively for aj and bj. Note that we have two to the n minus one, where n is the number of qubits uh, of these two by two operations. So if you look to these indices, aj and bj, we can immediately see that we can split them in three different parts. The parts with the indices before um, the qubit q and the qubit q, and then the uh, part, the, uh, the bits after that. So without lots of generality, we can select this i uh, l bits as follows, where in fact the numerical value is j are equal to the following uh, bit representation. Note that this j has um, one bit less than this ij and bj. Basically, they just corresponds to removing the bit at position q. And then we can define the following left and right uh, masks. Basically, um, this mask L, uh, if we apply that to uh, J, then only the first few bits are uh, kept. And if we apply uh, the, the right masks, then this part of the qubits are kept. And by using these left and right bit masks, we can write these indices or calculate these indices aj as follows we just mask j with m uh, the m right mr and then so basically we retain this part of the indices and the, of the bits and then uh, we sum them with um, ml ma uh, j mass with ml so we uh, keep these q bits and we just shift them one to the left so then we have in fact aj and the only difference between aj and bj is this one. And this one, uh, we can just add to aj by uh, summing with two to the n minus q minus one. So here is the overall algorithm. It's a very simple algorithm, just contains one for loop. So we define the masks, then in every iteration, we just compute the indices, indices aj and bj, and then we do the local two by two operations. Now, this is the algorithm for a general one qubit gate. Of course, if we have a specific structure, we can further simplify lines five and six of this algorithm. For example, if we have a Pauli X gate, then the unitary operation is just a swap operation with a Pauli Y, we have a swap operation and multiply with minus I and I. Um, for the Pauli Z gate and also for the phase gate, we only have to operate, uh, update half of the part of the vector. And then also for the rotation Z gate, uh, we can get very efficient uh, operations because we don't have to, um, it's, it's a local operation because we basically just do a diagonal scaling. So more importantly, if we have a particular sparsity structure in the gates, we should definitely exploit it. So the second class uh, I'm gonna talk about today is the controlled one qubit gates. And here we consider four different cases. So the first two cases, we have the controlled qubit smaller than the target qubit, where on the uh, right we have that the target qubit is smaller than the control qubit. And then this uh, full dot corresponds to a one controlled gate and the open dot corresponds to a zero controlled gate. So let's look at two examples. So the first example here, um, but we now apply it uh, on a three qubit state. The first thing we note is that we only have to 
update half of the uh, matrix. So we can exploit it, this. And this means that instead of having what we had before, four two by two operations, we will only have two uh, two by two operations. And then if you look to, for example, this right example, um, we still have only two operations we have to do, but it's different parts of the matrix. So if you look here, um, we can again compute them very efficiently through bit operations. So again, the state vector simulation breaks down in a series into a series of two by two matrix vector operations. But more importantly, we have to note that the number of uh, matrix vector operations is reduced by a factor two. So in this case, um, here are how we can compute the indices ij and bj. We have to distinguish between two different cases uh, where we say first uh, the control qubit is smaller than the target qubit and vice versa. And this asterisk here corresponds to either zero or one, respectively for zero or one controlled gates. So um, in order to implement it in a very efficient way, we um, define Q0 and Q1, either as the minimum or maximum of the control and target qubit, such that we can always guarantee that Q1 is smaller than Q, uh, bigger than Q0. And now, uh, in this case, we can again see here that we can split it in five different parts, and we will define or we choose the bits uh, as follows, such that we have three blocks for the indices J. And now in this case, since we have in, in fact uh, a two qubit gate, it's, it's a controlled one qubit gate, but now we don't have to define two masks, but we have to define three masks as follows. And then for the controlled gates, we can again, via very efficient uh, bit shift operations and bit operations in general, compute the indices ij and bj. And if we have a one controlled gate, basically um, we have a one here, uh, the, the, the asterisks are one and not zero. We just have to add some uh, constant there. So uh, these techniques can be generalized to multi uh, qubit gates. So for a general two qubit gate acting on qubits Q0 and Q1, this uh, the uh, state factor simulation breaks down into a series of four by four matfac operations. So we have to uh, calculate four indices, which we again can be uh, computing very efficiently through bit operations. Uh, a special case of a two qubit gate is the swap gate. And um, since we have a lot of zeros here, um, the implementation of the operation is very, uh, can be also done very efficiently by the following swap operations. And then for uh, more general multi qubit gates, the generalization is very straightforward. We only have to add two uh, additional bit masks per extra qubit. And especially for multi-controlled multi-qubit gates, so as, for example, the Toffoli gate or the doubly controlled not gate here, given on the left, um, this technique is very efficient because the more controls you have, the less elements in the vector uh, we have to update. For example, here, although we have um, uh, uh, a state of eight, uh, of length eight, we only have to update two uh, elements in the vector. So we only do uh, one uh, local operation. So now let's look at the implementation. So we have implemented everything in C++, modern C++ through OpenMP offloading. And I'm going to use for this example, the Pauli X gate, which is just a simple swap operation. So let's a little bit, let's have a closer look to the CPU implementation. So we, what we take as input is the total number of qubits, which qubit the gate is acting on, and then uh, a pointer to the state vector. So we just define the maximum number of J values. Then we define the left and right uh, bit masks, just to some bit operations. And then we have one uh, loop where, in fact, in each uh, 
iteration of the loop, we calculate the indices ij and bj, and then we just perform a simple swap operation. And we use the pragma statement here to do the uh, loop enrollment. Now, if you look at the GPU implementation, basically it's exactly the same, only what we have changed is the pragma statement. So what we do here is um, GPU offloading through uh, OpenMP, where instead of the, the statement pragma OpenMP parallel four, we now use the pragma OpenMP target teams distribute parallel four. So the only difference here is uh, these three words in the implementation. So um, for the experiments, uh, we will consider uh, two uh, different types of circuits. The first circuit is the QFT circuit, where we have a lot of uh, controlled operations, but far uh, sometimes uh, nearest neighbor qubits, but sometimes also um, the qubits are uh, located far away from each other. And then as a second example circuit, we use a constant depth circuit for Hamiltonian simulation, where we have the following only nearest neighbor uh, connection. So let's first have a look uh, to the, uh, the difference between the CPU and the GPU version. Um, we have tested everything on Perlmutter. So we have an AMD Epic CPU with 64 cores and 128 threads. And for the GPU, we have a, we use one NVIDIA A100 GPU with 40 gigabytes of memory. So um, let's start on this left plot. Um, the blue curves correspond to single precision. No, uh, the solid lines correspond to single precision and the uh, dotted line, no, sorry. Let's uh, take it back. The blue corresponds to CPU, red is GPU. The, that, the dotted lines are single precision and the solid lines are um, uh, double precision. So let's first look at the GPU, where we see we have a very nice uh, behavior in the number of the uh, number of qubits. Whereas for the CPU, at a certain point, um, it requires more time. Uh, we haven't had a time to look into detail uh, why this is uh, happening, but most likely this is due to some uh, caching effects uh, for a larger number of qubits. And then here on the right, you see the corresponding uh, speed up factors from CPU to GPU, where we uh, get, for example, up to 40 uh, speed up factor for a large number of qubits. Now, if we look to uh, the Hamiltonian circuit, basically um, has a very similar uh, behavior. So for the GPU, very nice behavior, whereas for uh, the CPU at a certain point, um, the, uh, yeah, the caching effects uh, will become very important. So um, we've also uh, benchmarked uh, Fusilla++ on Perlmutter uh, to some, with some other uh, packages out there. Um, again, on uh, Perlmutter, so AMD Epic and NVIDIA A100. And the results I'm showing here are just single precision, where we have Qcilla++ in blue, and then we have compared it to three different uh, other packages. Uh, CERC, which uh, uses QQuantum, uh, Quibo uh, with both QQuantum and QPy. And where we see that um, Qcilla++, especially uh, for a low number of qubits, outperforms um, all the other uh, packages. And uh, one possibility, especially for this big gap, it's in more than an order of magnitude, might be that um, these packages all use uh, Python wrappers and that there, there is some overhead. We are currently looking into that, uh, but still for larger number of qubits, uh, QC Lab++ still outperforms for the QFP circuit um, all these packages. Um, if you look to the Hamiltonian cir simulation circuit, um, QC Lab is still very competitive, only circuits uh, here are slightly uh, a little uh, better. So um, I think uh, I have to wrap up. So to conclude, um, what we have developed is a GPU accelerated quantum circuit simulator uh, with QC Lab++. And we have done that by calculating indices via bit operations. 
and using an OpenMP implementation, which is a very portable. And this resulted that we can do a very efficient GPU offloading, um, giving us speed up factors up to uh, 40 uh, times. And uh, the experiments have shown that QC Lab++ is competitive uh, with some other of the uh, packages which are out there. So please check out uh, our software. And I would like to acknowledge uh, NERSC for awarding uh, this QIS at Perlmutter Award, and then also the LBNL LDRD programming program, which allowed us to uh, make a first uh, implementation of this package. Thanks, Thanks Jerome. Thanks to you.